Hello and welcome to this course on data entry within the Reckon APS Exceed Professional Accounting Ledger. My name's Tanya and today we're going to go through the following agenda. Navigating through the data entry form within XPA. Review how a user can use the various preset data entry options being standard, session and user options. Look at how GST impacts data entry and look at the shortcuts for data entry processing. Let's get started and have a look within the XPA ledger. Within the XPA ledger, you'll see that there is a data entry menu option. Data entry can be completed in the following ways. You can import directly from Reckon Accounts. You can use the transaction import process. You may also choose to use Sync Direct to import transactions. Then you have journal entries and then different data entry types being receipts, payments, bank statements, sales, purchases, salary and wages and petty cash. The most common area is journals and all the uh, data entry option of the screens will appear the same way. When you first open your data entry screen it will be presented in the standard options view which means all the items down the bottom here are available for you to enter and to tab over to move to the next field. The fields would line up with the amount that you're seeing here to the right and the columns. As you go through that you might need to be more speedy in your data entry so you're going to set up your user defined options which you get to set how you'd like your reference to be sounded. If you want to repeat the description do you want to increment your reference? This is all done through the other button and options. Within the journal entry data entry options, you can see here we have a preference for date. If you're doing a lot of data entry for the same period, you might set that up as your user option to be the particular period. And then you can select skip input, which means your cursor instead of being on the date, We'll start off on the reference page, on the reference tab. If we look at reference, you may have a constant reference that you start with and then you'll increment it when you need to. The increment or repeat or an automatic reference number from the system. Again, you can skip input if this is not important for you to change the reference. You also have validation with inside the journal entries point. Whether you want to make each reference unique or only unique within journal entries or not unique. The account, you probably don't need any data entry options in that because you'll need to specify the account each entry. Likewise with the amount. The quantity, if I'm not using livestock, I would skip that input as my default. Unless you lose, use livestock on every ledger, then you would skip the import on that. I'm doing a lot of trial balance take-on, so I'm going to use this as my user option so that I don't have to keep typing this each time. Cash funds, I'm not going to use cash funds, so I'm going to skip that. And because I'm doing journal entry, rather than using the GST on the account rate code, I'm going to turn it off for journal entries. As I'll be journaling from a trial balance, I don't need to have the GST recorded on these transactions as I'm doing one journal. Going over to the reversal entries, it is possible to do reversals. I would mark the reversal entries. In this case, I do not want to do that, so I would skip the import as my default. And I'm not going to reconcile those, so I'll leave that blank. Auto edit means it will always go on edit as soon as you click on a row of all your entries. Enable all inputs on edit means that it's checked so I can go back to a disabled area and edit it and use the enter key as tab key. If I don't select this option the enter key will be the save key by default. If you're using your keypad you may want to keep that as the save key or use the tab key if you're using the keyboard. 
With this, I would then mark this to save as my user defaults. So any screen now that I look at, for example, GST, I can see I have a user default and I have the standard option. When I go into my journal entry screen, I can switch between the two by toggling on the, the, the options here. If I right click on an item, I can go straight to that particular item and change the entry as well. So I don't have to go and use the other and see all the options. For example, if I wanted to turn on quantity, then I could just simply go into the quantity area and disable the skip input. But because I'm just doing livestock, for example, on this entry, then I would just go OK. That becomes the third option available to me. So I have my user default where the quantity is turned off. I have the standard, which all of them are enabled, and I have a session option. So you can easily flick between the two to be the most speedy way for you to enter your, tr your information. And in this case, I'm doing a trial balance. Um, so I might even go to the reference field and skip that input. So all I need to do within my cursor of the key for the trial balance is go through and enter my account, 230 for sales, press tab, and then I would enter in my sales amount as per the trial balance. Enter would save that. And then I simply go on to the next transaction. If the account does not exist, it will ask me, do I want to add it? It knows it's professional fees because it might be on the master template. So I will go and add that. If there's a particular account that does not exist, as I go through, it will ask me, do I want to add the account now? If I select yes, it will open up your chart of accounts maintenance form. You can go through and add and create a brand new account by typing it in here. Or I could clear the form and show my master chart or click show and then type the account that I want to add and it will add that directly from the master chart. As you get familiar with the master chart you'll know the account codes that you want to add. If you're not familiar with it then you would find them and add and drag and drop them down. I won't save that, I'll continue. You'll be able to see here as we're adding the transaction, the unposted value here will be displayed. If I exit out of the screen, it will tell me that there is a balance. This should be zero before exiting. It doesn't have to be zero. You can exit at this point. Down the bottom of your ledger, you'll see that there is an unposted value of four. If I run my try balance, at this point I don't have any entries posted. If I want to go back into my data entry screen into journals, I will need to change the options so that you can see the entries that have already been made. By default, when you go into this area, the show options are showing this session. So when you go back in, you'll still see your unposted value, but you won't see your existing entries to edit. So you'll need to alter this by going to show and select all entries. Typically I suggest all entries as entered, but you can change the entry order around. Again, you have this as a user options to save and you can also look at what the standard option is. To edit existing entries, you simply double click on the row change the entry, save, and then put in the amount that you want to enter. Again, using your minus sign as a toggle between debit and credit. Once you have entries balancing to zero, you may post the entries by selecting the post options. Once the entries are posted, you can now see those sitting on your trial balance. If you were to open the data entry option for sales, 
it's going to use its expected song -in. So if I do a data entry for sales, I can also go into the sales entries and look at the options. Just as we had with journal entries, I can then default what I would like and save as my user default. I can also go in and show the relevant items that I want to see and save as my default. You can see I've entered in a transaction here, the first one. When I enter that in, it is expecting a GST rate. It will show you the percentage of that and the account that it will be posting to. If I was to clear this, it allows me to do the next entry. So as I go through, I can select the relevant rate. In this case, I am not entering my sales entry as a credit. It is expecting a credit entry. Once you've entered in the particular sales, and obviously this would be date driven based on the period that you're in, you can select post. You'll see here that we have an unposted value. Because we're using the sales, it's using an unposted contra account. And in this case, you get to specify where the account will go from. It could be a suspense account, or you can put it against whichever account you specify. You'll see those entries posted there. If you have a look at your trial balance for these, when you drill into the particular account, you'll be able to see the entries that have been made. You will see the source of the entries. In this case, we can see our sales. And you'll be able to see the credit is being added in here. And you can also see the journal adjustment. So depending on the source, will depend on how you enter the debit or credit. The other item that you have got available within any data entry process is that you can use what we call a dissection. So if you go into other, you can do a dissection total. The total of the dissection might be $15,000. So of that $15,000, you'll see here the split of the dissection. Again, I'm using purchases in this case, expecting a debit. $4,500 goes on to advertising. And then the other amount, I will put to general expenses. And I can use the balance for that amount. Once the dissection total has reached, you would say yes, and it's now available for you to do your contra entry again to post your purchases. So again, you can look at that in your trial balance. Now, depending on the way that you set things up, you may prefer to have data entry and journals on both open and you use your horizontal window. Of course, you can always use your multiple screens, dual screens, to be able to put these onto whichever window that you see fit. If you're using multiple data entry points, you can also post all entries by using the post entries option. Remembering you have your unposted totals down the bottom right and you'll also see in your trial balance any unposted values sitting as a total here as unposted entries. Within your data entry as well, you can also go into other and go into the setup. If you need to move to a different period, you can do so by clicking on the period that you need to enter your journal or you could also move to a different entry type and then it'll simply just move you from one to the other within the same screen. For any particular entry that you're looking at, if I go back to show the entries, I can show all entries and save that as my user default. I can see all my entries as I've entered them. 
if I'm clicking on 680, if I wanted to have a look at 680 account, I can have a look at that by using the inquiry screen here. I can also go into that particular account and look at the ledger. Because it's already open, it will go into the ledger drill down for this. Other options available, if I need to delete an entry, you simply highlight the row that you wish to delete and select delete down the bottom. Go ahead and do your adjustment. So two ways you can correct it, either double click and edit it or delete it and do a new journal. Anything that you delete or add, you'll see that there is unposted values. So you need to post those to continue. Other options available in data entry. You can use the post entries from the menu, which allows you to post entries across multiple sources and also across multiple periods. Data entry also has the ability for you to unpost all entries. We do warn you to do a backup before you do this. Data entry to go back and post all of those will repost them again. There is the ability and is controlled through auditing, oh, sorry, is controlled through security as to whether you can delete unposted entries and delete audited entries. Your main data entry options are available in your toolbar as shortcuts, journal entries, post entries, account translate or third party translation imports and your Reckon Accounts imports. And lastly, by selecting the F2 key, when you're in your journal entries, will give you the shortcut keys. So you can also use the left mouse click, as I showed earlier, as well as the function keys to get to the relevant fields. And this is available in all data entry options. Let's review the learning outcomes. We've confidently set up user options to be able to make data entry quick as we've saved our user options. We've understood the various types of data entry and how to show entries posted and unposted. We understood how to activate and deactivate GST data entry. We know how to add accounts when entering data and how to find accounts in the data entry. We know how to move to other data entries quickly and easily through the setup option. And we've been able to post and unpost entries and review using the trial balance. On behalf of the Reckon Training Academy, we hope you found that useful. If you need more information, please contact us. Thank you.